Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways Real Railway Profile, where we look at some of the most famous and innovative stock in use on the UK's railway system and show you some of the models that that has inspired too. This morning, we're looking at the British Rail Mark III, arguably one of the most successful coaches built in the world and certainly one of the most successful built for use in the UK. They've been with us now for nearly 50 years of operation between the different types and they can still be seen out there today performing a lot of different duties with various models available too in several different scales so if you've got any questions regarding the mark III coaches or the models that they have inspired please do ask them in the chat and i'll answer as many questions as i can throughout the stream Otherwise, let's get started with the history. And as ever with a real railway profile, we have to go back a little bit before the introduction of the Mark III coach to understand why it was developed, why it was constructed, and why it was put into use on British railways. And the British railway scene of the 1960s was rapidly changing. With the withdrawal of steam locomotives, the final ones went in 1968, the railways were really being stepped up to provide more speed with competition from motorways, airlines and other traffic out there. The railways were having a complete reinvention of their image with the British Rail branding coming through. But the one thing they didn't quite have was the speed of services. A lot of lines were being electrified and new higher power diesel locomotives being rolled out on different services. But the maximum speed was either 100 or 110 miles an hour, dependent on what main line you went on. Some were even lower than that. So they had to look at a new design of coach that could withstand a higher speed. It had the modifications that the earlier coaches didn't have to be able to have the correct braking systems and operations to work at higher speeds but within the confines of the UK's railway system. So the BR design team settled on 125 miles an hour as the target on the fastest lines. They had to make a vehicle that could work at this speed and any of the lines that could be would be upgraded to handle this too. They'd started developing coaches such as the Mark II air conditioned coaches, including the Mark II Ds. These were slowly developed over the different types with more and more modifications put into them. But this really was setting up for a brand new type of coach, which was fully designed in the early 1970s. The design actually started in 1968, but in 1969, the high speed train project was launched. And with this having the full intention of regular services operating at 125 miles an hour, the need for a brand new coach was really stepped up. So development was really poured into these vehicles, resulting in 10 prototypes arriving in 1972. This is the, one of the first of the Mark III's. These are the prototypes used with the prototype HST. And these are actually quite different from the production runs, but you do still get the flavor of a coach that was nothing like had been seen before. You've got the covered underframe modules there, which had a lot of the different equipment inside them, rather than on previous coaches, such as the Mark I and Mark II, where that was fully exposed. You have the main electrical heating and control as standard on the ends. You've got the corridor ends there too, and a fully steel fabricated body from monocoque construction which means that it's all one piece construction. So that really increases the crash worthiness of these. A fully brand new bogey type was developed as well, the BT10 bogey, which you can see on the coaches here. This had disc brakes on it, which was a new innovation again for British Railways, allowing that extra quality of braking to make sure the coaches could handle 125 miles an hour. So these coaches were like nothing else that you'd seen before. They were completely redeveloped inside with new standards of comfort in there. They had air conditioning as standard and electric heating in there too. And different vehicles were made such as standard class opens, first class opens and a restaurant vehicle too. So these prototypes were immediately successful and British Rail started building various other vehicles to go along with these. This is where the story divides a little bit and it heads into two different types. Whilst the development was for the HST at this time, with the standard Mark III being developed between 1976 and 1982, there was also still seen a requirement for locomotive haul stock. 
This would mainly be placed on the West Coast Main Line to operate with Class 86 and the brand new Class 87 locomotives, which could handle some of those higher speeds on the line. And again, improving comfort on these services where the diesel powered high speed train was not required as the electrification was already there. So these were introduced as well. These are known as the Mark III A coaches, and these differ from the HST hauled variants in two main ways. There's a lot of the styling and the interiors that are the same. However, these have end buffers, so they can hook up to conventional locomotives and other hauled rolling stock. And the electrical systems are different too, with these designed to get the electric supply for running the lights and the various air conditioning and auxiliary functions from the locomotive they are plugged into rather than a generator on the HST for the high-speed train hauled vehicles. So these coaches were started to be introduced in the late 1970s. Most of them were paired up with the high-speed trains being introduced into the west of England, the east coast main line and other parts of the UK too, slowly but surely throughout the 1980s. And do check out our high-speed train profile video on YouTube or Facebook if you want to hear more of that story. The Mark III A's mainly stuck to the West Coast Main Line in this time. You did occasionally find them elsewhere, but they really started to get their name known for being paired with the high-speed electric locomotives that were coming through. We can see here the 1980s, a slight brand change again, heading into the intercity era now where BR really started to capitalise on the different types that you can see here. So this starts coming through there then. You'll also spot that there's a Mark I brake in there too. These were upgraded to work with the Mark III coaches, but they did limit them on the speed as did the Class 87s. So they couldn't quite make the full 125 miles an hour on the West Coast, but they did get up to 110 miles an hour with an upgraded route, locomotive and a brake coach there. It's quite interesting that in the original batch of Mark III's, there wasn't actually a brake coach vehicle built. But British Rail did start to see some opportunities with the Mark III design. It was proving hugely popular with customers, both as part of the HSTs and as part of the conventional logo hold stock too. So the design was changed and implemented in different areas of BR too. Some of the aging sleeper coaches based on Mark I designs were replaced throughout the 1980s with sleeper coaches built to the Mark III design with separate compartments, pantries in there for supply of customers in there too. These were used all across the UK for a while on various different sleeper trains, but heading into the 1990s, they were mainly focused on what is known as the Caledonian sleeper services from London to the Highlands of Scotland and of course, Glasgow and Edinburgh and also working down on the Knight Riviera from London Paddington to Penzance. Indeed, you can still see some of these Mark III coaches working with Great Western Railway on these sleeper services out there too. But we've not quite told the story yet. We're still working our way to the total of 848 different Mark III's that were constructed. We've got a couple more to go, and these are the Mark III B vehicles. So these were introduced from the 1980s onwards. So we're talking 1985, 1986. This introduced the driving van trailer. Now, if you remember our photo from a couple of minutes ago, you'll see here that the brake vehicle on this locomotive is a Mark I. There was no Mark III brake vehicles built originally, and the older design had to step in to fill the gap here. However, this did limit speed. And of course, at the ends of the lines too, you did need to run around or put a different locomotive on the end of your train. Experiments in Scotland came with came up with the Mark II DBSO, which was converted from a Mark II coach. And this then progressed into the Mark III DVT, which is a driving van trailer. So this actually works as a cab unit. It's not a powered coach, but it is controlled by the locomotive on the rear of the train. So it's a push-pull formation. This also provided useful baggage space out there too for the various different freight, goods and luggage that these trains could have carried on their line. So these were introduced onto the West Coast Main Line to really help speed up the services there too. A small fleet of additional first class vehicles and a fleet of experimental brake vehicles were provided. 
These were introduced onto the West Coast main line. They had integral tail lights, and some of these were branded as intercity Pullman vehicles with the Pullman service making a return to British Rail in the 1980s. It didn't last too long, but it was out there as a slightly more luxurious service between London and some of the cities in the northwest of England. So that came back for a little while. There were some other minor differences with the Mark III coaches. So have a look there at those. So we're coming up now to where we've got to the end of the story. We've had 848 of these coaches built. They were all built in Derby at the Lichurch Lane Works, and they were built from 1975 to 1988. But there's even more of this story to tell. The Mark III was such a successful design. It was implemented on a lot of other multiple units, and the coaching design and the shape and the style was implemented on several different trains, some of which you can still see in operation to this day. This is a class 442, the electric multiple unit, and you can see there the standard Mark III coaching design with some variations to make that a fully powered EMU. And some vehicles were exported to Ireland too. These differed slightly with different bogies and they also had the push doors on there rather than the slam door stock of the Mark III's. But uh, some vehicles were built for the Irish system as well as a proposed international train, which again had some variations from the standard Mark III's. This was made for the export market. Unfortunately, they weren't too successful and they were, in, they were exported to Ireland too. So coming out of British Rail, the coaches survived with a lot of different operators. The loco hold versions stayed mainly on the West Coast main line in the late 1990s, running here, as you can see, with Virgin Trains, who took over this operation. Once the Virgin Pendolino had been introduced in the early 2000s, the Mark III loco hold stock started to disperse itself around the UK with several former Virgin Trains locomotives and coaches heading over to East Anglia, running on services from London to Norwich. Indeed, they were only withdrawn this year from that service, so they did last uh, quite some time. Smaller rates then transferred to other operators, such as Wrexham and Shropshire, who used them from Wrexham to London through Shrewsbury and Shropshire. And also Arriva Trains Wales for a time used services from Cardiff to Hollyhead with their own rake of Mark Freeze too. At this time, of course, there were several coaches, many coaches, in fact, still remaining as part of HST sets with operators all across the country, including Cross Country, Virgin Cross Country, Great North Eastern Railway, and many, many more. So that takes us up to around today, really, and we'll see where the Mark III is up to at the moment. There's been some changes, as you can see here on the screen. I'll just pull that up for you. You can see that a lot of the Mark III's, those in use with Great Western Railway, Cross Country and ScotRail have now been fitted with plug doors, similar but not quite the same to that trialled on the Irish Rail stock a number of years before. This is to improve the access to them and they have also had a full refurbishment of the interiors, but these coaches still remain in service today. We can see there one of the Chilton Railways examples. So it's still got that classic Mark III design. This is one of the ex loco hauled coaches. Still is loco hauled by a Class 68 usually, but it has been fully refurbished with modern interior and the plug doors that you can see there. A top tip, if you're looking at your Mark III's and you want to know which type is which, if it's a loco hauled type, it will have buffers but also the number, the five digit tops number that you see there will start with a number one. If it's an HST coach paired with a high speed train, it will have a number four. But another way to see the difference is you can see the buffers on the coach there. And looking at this HST coach, you can see that that's just got a Buckeye coupling for coupling up to other HST coaches and there are no buffers between the different vehicles. So it's still possible to see the Mark III's out there on services today. They are nearly 50 years old, as we've mentioned, but a lot of the more modern colour schemes, including the cross country that we see here, do still have the refurbishments carried out on them. It shows just how successful a design these coaches are. And a couple of other last little places that you wouldn't quite expect to see a Mark III, but I'll show you all the same. 
This is part of the network rail measurement train operated with HST power cars. So these Mark 3s go around the country testing different parts of the UK's railway system. These are heavily adapted and modified coaches, but still the basic successful Mark 3 design. And last but not least, if you've got power, but you need a little bit more power, why not make your Mark 3 into a generator coach? These were ex-sleeper vehicles were drawn in the 1990s, designed for use towing Eurostar units across the UK on international services. Unfortunately, they never took off, but the generator coaches can still be seen out there performing several other different duties on the UK's railways. There weren't too many of these, but I really wanted to show you just how diverse the history of the Mark III is. Starting off as a simple coach design, it then works as part of the high-speed train. There's also vehicles in the Royal Train too. The Queen and Prince Philip have their own Mark III coaches. So if that doesn't tell you how good a design it is, if it's good enough for royalty, it's certainly good enough for us modelers, I'd say so anyway. And you can still see these with several operators across the UK, and I really would recommend taking a closer look at one of these coaches to understand their importance as part of the UK railway history. Anyway, enough about the actual vehicles, let's talk about the models. And we've got some great ones here that are available right now. Either some of the older models you can check out on our pre-owned listings if you follow that link in the description, or every model I have here is available new right now too. And there's some fantastic models with a lot of detail. Heading back to the start of the story, Hornby introduced their first model back in the 1980s. And whilst it was a fantastic model for its time, it was quite quickly outdated. It was shorter than the actual Mark III design. The Mark III's in real life was 75 feet long, which was over 10 foot longer than your standard coach of the time. And Hornby did shrink this coach down to make it fit and work properly on some of the tighter train set curves. This was replaced by Lima's coach in the 1980s, and Hornby did provide their own version of the correct length Mark III II in double O gauge. So you can still get those today. You've got the logo hauled variation that you can see there with the Virgin Trains livery. And this year, they have introduced the sliding door coaches. So those of you who are really up to date with your Mark III modeling can pick up these right now in some of the popular liveries that pair up with the Mark, with the HST power cars out there. So whether you want the loco hauled versions or the HST versions, Hornby's coaches are a great way to look at, starting at around £30, so a really good bargain price for a lot of detail there too. If you want even more detail and you are looking for the loco haul coaches, take a really good close look at the Oxford Rail double O gauge coaches. These are absolutely crammed with separately fitted details, including separate handrails on the roof and all the different modules too. At the time of this video, Hoxford only produced the local hauled variations of the coaches, but there are quite a few liveries there, including the original BR Blue and Grey from the 1970s and 80s, the Scott Rail livery used on the push-pull services with Class 47s between Glasgow, Edinburgh and Aberdeen, and also the coaches as seen on the West Coast Main Line throughout the 1990s. But if you want a really detailed model and you've got the locomotives to haul them, I would strongly recommend a look at the Oxford Rail coach that we see here. Anyway, Engage modelers, it's time for you. Dapol have brought through many, many, I couldn't even list how many variations, there's so many of the Mark III coach through for their models. We've got the loco hauled variations, we have the HST variations, all the major types of coach are there. You've got the buffets, the restaurant cars, first opens, trailer opens, the whole lot are available in a huge amount of different liveries covering right through from the early days in the blue, grey and the intercity local hall coaches up to the current day, even 2020 liveries such as the East Midlands railway coaches that you can pick up right now. There's so many to talk about there. I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't got time to mention all the liveries, but the three I've got here are the first Great Western from the 2000s, the Dynamic Lines, as it's known as, Grand Central, who, uh, who still are a private operator running between London, Sunderland, and other destinations in the northeast of England, and, of course, Great Northeastern Railway, who operated the East Coast Main Line in the early part of the 2000s. So 
if you are a modeler from 1970 onwards, I can't understand if you don't have a Mark III already. There are so many different opportunities, unless you are running a purely freight depot. But even then, there are vehicles such as the test train, which may head into those depot, depots at time. And the research department of British Rail had one of these coaches too, which appeared in some unusual locations. They're a great way to celebrate a fantastic British design, which is still in service after over 45 years and certainly shows no signs of going out of operation just yet. So do have a look at the models we've got available right now. I really encourage you to read further into the history of the Mark III's. There is so much more I've not been able to say on today's stream, but check out various great websites on the internet and books out there too. But obviously, if you have any questions at all regarding the models that we have here today, please ask them in the chat, please put them in the comments, or do get in touch with our customer experience team who would be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, I hope you have, you've enjoyed today's Real Railway Profile. If you have, don't forget to check out more videos like this and subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page for all the latest model railway news and our skills cast session videos too. I'll let you have one last look through some of those images, but otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.